Hello and welcome back to the brainstorm of the week. Uh, this is the part two of the podcast uh, in which we answered the question uh, given to you in the week one, uh, Feb 2013, as a part of video podcast series from regional for trainees.com. And the question that we asked you was, while performing an ankle block, which of the following nerves is blocked using an artery as a landmark? And the choices given to you were uh, superficial peroneal nerve, sural nerve, saphenous nerve, and deep peroneal nerve. Obviously, the answer is uh, deep peroneal nerve. And in this part two podcast, we are going to uh, talk about how different nerves are related to different tendons in the ankle, uh, why some of them are superficial and why some of them are deep, which will enhance our understanding of uh, why subcutaneous infiltration in certain cases is enough to block the nerves, whereas in certain other cases you need to um, block the nerve uh, by having a deeper injection. Um, so in this diagram what we want to show is the relationship of different nerves, veins and arteries uh, with different tendons, whether they are superficial or whether they are deep. Uh, the first structure that we want to focus upon, starting from medial to lateral, uh, would be uh, the blue structure in this diagram which can be seen. That is the long saphenous vein. Uh, it lies anteriorly uh, to the medial malleolus, continuing downwards uh, from the medial aspect of the leg. Uh, and it is related intimately to the uh, fibers of the saphenous uh, nerve, uh, which can be seen here. Uh, the saphenous nerve comes downwards and crosses the anterior medial part of the ankle in relationship with the long saphenous uh, vein and therefore uh, giving injection around the long saphenous vein between the external hallucis longus tendon and the medial malleolus can help uh, block the saphenous nerve. Uh, and this is the tendon I was talking about, the uh, extensor uh, hallucis uh, tendon. And behind this tendon, uh, or slightly medial to it, lies the deep peroneal nerve. And as it comes uh, downwards, the deep peroneal nerve then crosses the tendon, comes to lie in relationship with the uh, anterior uh, tibial artery, which continues downwards into the foot as dorsalis pedis artery. The nerve may be related uh, either medial to it or lateral to it or maybe variable to it. But the important thing to realize is that the nerve, uh, the deep peroneal nerve lies under the anterior annular ligament and therefore is a deep structure uh, uh, and uh, is not subcutaneous unlike the uh, superficial peroneal nerve which can be seen here uh, lying a bit anterolaterally, uh, lying above the ligament. Uh, that is also very important to realize. And therefore, when we want to block the superficial peroneal nerve, all we need to do uh, is to uh, relatively uh, just give subcutaneous infiltration uh, from the uh, extensor longus distorum tendon to about lateral malleolus, and that should do the job and block the superficial peroneal nerve uh, uh, appropriately. Uh, other important thing to realize is that the uh, saphenous uh, nerve or the saphenous vein are also lying above the uh, ligament and therefore parasaphenous injection uh, above the uh, medial malleolus, around the medial malleolus should reliably block the uh, saphenous nerve as well. Having a look at the plantar surface of the foot, um, what we are trying to look at in this diagram is the uh, medial plantar nerve which can be seen here and the lateral plantar nerve. The calcalian nerve supplies the heel and it all, all, uh, all, um, already been given above the ankle joint.
and the lateral plantar nerve supplies the lateral one and a half toes whereas the medial plantar nerve supplies about medial three and a half toes. Finally, what we need to also learn, uh, and I would say perhaps this is the most important diagram of all of them all, is the relationship of different structures uh, with the bones and the muscles. So let's first uh, look at the nerves. So this is a cross-sectional view of the right ankle. Uh, so this would be posterior. Uh, this particular part is going to be anterior. Fibula is situated laterally. So we are going to put L there. And tibia is situated medially. So we're going to put M there. So once our orientation is correct, let's one by one identify the nerves. Between uh, the tendoachillus and the fibula lies sural nerve in the subcutaneous plane. And therefore, once you convert this valley lying between the fibula and the tendoachillus in a hill, using local anesthetic, you would be able to anesthetize the sural nerve. Uh, between the fibula and the sural nerve lies two muscles. First one is peroneus brevis and the other one is the peroneus longus muscle. As you move anteriorly, you come across the tendon of the external digitorum longus muscle, superficial to which lies the short saphenous vein and accompanied by the superficial peroneal nerves. And therefore, when you are going to anesthetize the superficial peroneal nerve, all you need to do is to identify short saphenous vein and uh, you can give paracephanous uh, injections to anesthetize the superficial peroneal nerve. So, so far we have covered the sural nerve and we have covered the superficial peroneal nerve. Let's have a look at a few other structures. Now, I've already mentioned before that the, uh, the anterior tibial artery and the deep peroneal nerve, both of them lie between the extensor distorum longus muscle and the extensor Alysis longus muscle, which is uh, this muscle there. And the artery and the nerves uh, have a variable relationship. They may be uh, medial or lateral or lateral or medial. It doesn't make a difference as long as you know that you are injecting between the two tendons uh, and uh, around the artery. So if you can feel the pulse, uh, injecting around it should do the job. Uh, tibialis anterior muscle lies anteriorly um, and the tibialis muscle lies posterior to the tibia. At the medial malleolus, just above the medial malleolus, you will find the long saphenous vein and the saphenous nerve is situated in a subcutaneous plane along with this um, along with this uh, vein. So again, paravenous infiltration, subcutaneous plane should get you the, saf uh, the saphenous nerve. Uh, and we've already covered the deep peroneal nerve here. Last few structures would be um, posterior to the uh, tibialis posterior lies the flexor digitorum longus muscle and deeper within lies the flexor hallucis longus muscle. Now, it's important to feel the posterior tibial artery because situated posteriorly and laterally to it is the posterior tibial nerve. And therefore, if you can feel the posterior tibial artery, injecting and locating by uh, putting a needle behind the posterior tibial artery, uh, you would be able to uh, anesthetize the posterior tibial nerve. And again, you can see here that the posterior tibial nerve, just like the deep peroneal nerve, lies deep to the fascia and is a deep structure. So that's it guys, um, if you like this podcast, do share it with your friends. Uh, you can go on to the YouTube channel or the website and leave comments, like or dislike the video depending upon uh, how you thought it was. I think that is the most important part of uh, the podcast that keeps me coming back uh, to uh, you know make more questions and more podcasts. You can share this with your friends using Facebook, Google or Twitter. 
uh, and you can also subscribe to my channel um, on YouTube so thank you this is uh, once again a presentation of regionalfortrainees.com